Oh, nice. You got Boa. I didn't look. Nice. Sheesh. This is Ace, and we played pre-release today. We really went undefeated, obviously, that's how you win the pre-release tournament, but we went undefeated today. We did Kid Lead. As you can see, we have our second, it's actually our second one. We weren't able to make the previous video. I'll see if I can find my build, but I had taken the sleeves out. But anyways, this is our pre-release winner card, pre-release stamp. We have the Luffy, now we have this. So on our way to collecting all of them, this is a deck profile. Not that it really matters because it's draft, so maybe give you guys some ideas of what to perhaps throw in the deck. All right, here we go. All right, so. Obviously, again, this is draft mode or sealed, right? So you guys get the, uh, you know, random packs, six random packs, and you make the best of what you could. So 
I was able to get a good amount of 2k blockers. If you have more, then the more the merrier. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on this deck list. We were able to get 9 different ones. Um, so, Makino, any of 2k is automatic in the deck. I think there's just no questions or no reason to really question it. Throwing that in the deck. And then blockers is that other thing. Uh, blockers weren't something I automatically threw in the deck. It was definitely something uh, like you had to, you know, weigh in the results of like these guys. Like he's good, but no counter sometimes can get pretty, you know, pretty costly like the Neko. Uh, but that just makes you want to play it even sooner. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's dead in hand. So could be fodder for... Um, a card I'll show you later, which won me the, the tournament, essentially. So there's that. And then next, we have some three costs. This is a pretty much uh, mini Basil Hawkins. This came through, especially with some Zoro uh, games where they just swarm the field with one or two costs, you know, two, two cost uh, 4k attacks, you know, and then when they go in, they just, you know, you play this card. You have your set already when they're starting to build the board. The moment they attack, you just swing pretty high. Make sure they don't counter her because if they do counter her, her effect is dead. Yeah. Vista, I mean, I wish I had more. Uh, there was one time I had two and that was amazing. But yeah, one, you play him automatically. Highly recommend. Um, yeah, Squad, just you know, another three. Okay, his effect's not live unless you have white beard. Next are the vanilla four costs. Around we we were able to put in four, um, so four six Ks. This card is amazing. Luckily, I was able to pull two as well in my six packs. This one, you know, just pretty much rest any blocker. Uh, this was able to just do so much work. Uh, so good, such a good card. Four cost six K attack, and it rests like any blocker in the game that I know of at least. Uh, able to just rest uh, Marco. Uh, Borsalino, like anything, really. Just uh, night night with blockers, and then this just uh you know vanilla five cost beaters. And then Hina did work. It's kind of like Uta, except you don't rest them. It's good for the tournament for the the draft. Only thing is, I wish they would be rested, but still saves you from getting uh, swarmed and attacked too much. Uh, but I mean, yeah, like other than that, you can just stop them if you have this in hand play it you know that came up actually so there's that it was pretty good this one um just you know 8k is pretty nice nice to have uh six cost eight beater if i get it you know once you have enough you play if i did not have this this one was actually in my win condition how i pulled two uh, I, I'm guessing they went into a new box and I was able to get, yeah, two and one in my six packs. Everyone was like, well, yeah, this was extremely lucky. Obviously, I don't expect anyone else to kind of really have two. Uh, but obviously, if you pull two, why not play two, right? This card here pretty much won multiple games. I mean, obviously, you know, not an auto win, but it was able to put that much pressure where if they have like, you know, their five beaters or... You know, anything like Yamato, anything problematic really, because like everyone's running these cards, especially like Zoro players and whatnot, like they're just going in on the four costs or even five costs. And these cards are hard to swing over, right? 7k, it gets problematic. Um, there was times where I buy like the finals, I played a guy that had like three of these out, uh, six costs, and those were obviously out of range for this. So those were uh, games where I found toughest, but still like this card was able to really put them, put in a lot of work. Another option that uh, I had is the loop six cost Luffy. I got this deck. Uh, we'll do a deck list of that as well. But yeah, so this is not in this build, but we were able to win with this card as well. This card, uh, pretty similar to this card, right? You trash one. Obviously, this one's, I, in my opinion, obviously a lot better. Pops it, doesn't come back. This card, obviously, you don't really want to return Yamato, uh, but any blocker, really. I just return a blocker. Usually, there's just one when I, you know, make this effect go live. Um, but yeah, this is not this list, so I shouldn't be talking too much about that card, but like this absolutely the nuts pull. And then yeah, this, you know, I mean, no need to explain seven cost blocker. You can, you can make an attacker, but obviously it's really, really powerful with the block. 
Um, I don't, I mean, I kind of misplayed and not attacked with it, but I kept it as a blocker and it was definitely a threat. When you attack with it, they're going to want to uh, somehow swing for it anyway as a pseudo blocker anyways. So there's that. Um, and then, yeah, this card got so lucky pulling this as well. Um, obviously, it's a 10 cost. You can't play until end game, but pretty much pops anything for free, right? A kind of effect without trashing a card and he's 10k. So, yeah, this guy, you get on the field, pops already any 5 cost that is giving you any problems uh, or making you think twice of attacking. So then, yeah, this really good combo when you had like 6 Dawn enough. F. Um, I played this actually a few times, or I mean, you can just play this for free. I wish I had more. You can KO up to one of your opponent's rested card, uh, characters with a cost of 4 or less. And then there's, of course, the Death Wink. I think everybody is running this in the deck, it's amazing. Um, it actually came up where it came out of life. Opponent was waiting to swing with a seven, like, you know, seven attacker or something. Yeah, it's a seven or less when it comes out of life. And that absolutely saved me. You know, I think I had like one life left, but if that attack went through, um, then their lead, you know, could have done some damage. Yeah, Death Wink had two. And then this card, pretty good. Um, Definitely in at least the sealed format. I don't like the Return of Dawn. Sometimes it like there's a moment where I played it and I needed to play this next turn, so you have to like think twice um, playing it too early. But definitely like towards the end when you already have uh, Max Dawn, that like it doesn't hurt to you know next turn you'll get it back. Yeah, if you're trying to rush to you know get to a certain um, amount of Dawn, you know it's kind of I'd rather just wait. Uh, but there was moments where yeah, obviously in the end game this came through where your opponent just has, you know, more bodies or, you know, big attackers, you just throw this, uh, you know, you activate this and you just make them buff their characters more using more resources to even get an attack through. So actually, yeah, very, very helpful. Um, I maxed out on this as well. So there you go. That's the deck profile of our pre-release tournament winner. And that's how we got this um, card here. And then we can show you guys our other one. Uh, that'd be probably like another video, but I can also show you guys uh, my wife's uh, deck profile. We'll probably do that real quick too. Have her kind of give. She went uh, three and two. I went uh, five and zero. Oh, so yeah, five and zero, oh, three and two. Not too bad. So we can, you know, if you want more ideas, but still really good. So let's go and if you guys want, we can check that out too. Hi, I'm here with Cha. Hello. Uh, she went three and two at the pre-release today. Oh yeah, yesterday, three and two <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, I didn't get to play today, but um, this was my build for uh, yesterday's uh, pre-release tournament. I ran uh, Zoro as my leader. I like the fact that, you know, he can add the 1K to um, all my attackers. That way, you know, I could have some extra boost when attacking. So, you know, draft mode, all random cards, but uh, luckily I got a bunch of 2k counters, which I took all of them as much as I could, <laughs> obviously, to, you know, help boost me up when I need to counter. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I had 6 uh, 2k counters. So. Next, I had uh, my low-cost blockers. I had 2, 3, 4. So these were good um, in the beginning if I was able to draw them. Okay, and then I also had an, all uh, these as low-cost blockers as well. Two Nekos and Blenheim. <laughs> the blockers, not only did I have um, all the low cost blockers, I did have uh, some high cost blockers as well. So at that point when I was playing, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should have ran Kid because he can restand and then that way I don't have to worry so much about blocking him for the attacks. But I mean, I did like that this was my offensive when I had to play um, my other attackers, such as uh, these ones. These are my. Uh, 4k attackers, so obviously with the active dawn, I can bring them up to 5k. And buff them accordingly if you need to swing higher. Yeah, and then this one, Vista, I like that I, um, you know, on play, I got to KO uh, 3k or less, so that worked in my favor when I had to pop some of the opponent's low cost blockers, so that was uh, helpful as well. I wish I had two of them. <laughs> More actually, <laughs> shoot. I wish I had a full set of him. Uh, <laughs> I had a bunch of these uh, six, uh, four cost, uh, 6k attacks. So I had 
to uh, Zoro and then Moria, uh, Atmos, and King Du was a 7k, 5, um, five costs. So I had those ones as well. 1k counter as well. I um, mean, you know, obviously Mihawk was one I saved because uh, 6 cost but 8k plus the active Dawn and make him 9. That was a formidable foe for my enemies. <laughs> okay, then in, I had um, uh, Borsalino. So this one um, kind of saved me because he cannot be KO'd by effect. Um, so he has to be like swung at. So this one, um, like, you know, they you know, they're scared of this one because I wasn't, uh, I was able to just have him on, on field and he also gains, uh, 1k, um, during the opponent's turn. So he's technically 6k when, mm -hmm. um, when they're trying to attack. Yeah. So I'll be Literally able to block for, yeah, so this was uh, my favorite, mini favorite blocker. <laughs> yeah. And then Kuzan, luckily he's only, uh, four costs and then I get to draw one card. And then um, when I attack, I give up to one of my opponent's characters a neg four. So cost, neg four cost during this turn. So that was um, helpful too. And um, being able to draw. So if I needed more um, more cards in hand, if I was getting low, this was um, very helpful. When he's on the field already, you can use like a Kainu. When he yeah. pops, you can pop a, I can pop a, a yeah, yeah. six or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So And then with Garp. When they're at zero, he pops and even at zero. Mm -hmm. This one I have Yamato. I, I had one of these, but I was able to rest up to one opponent's characters with a cost of six or less. So that was helpful when um, they had uh, other attackers that were uh, big bodies, but you know, six costs. I was able to um, rest them and then I would be able to attack with one of my other big bodies to get rid of them off the field. Yeah, and resting their blockers. Yeah, if they, if they, had, <laughs> if they had blockers. Yeah, definitely. So I have uh I had two Hinas, who's uh obviously a higher cost blocker, but um I was able to unblock. It can select up to one of my opponent's characters with a cost of six or less, and then they can't attack during that turn. So, and um also since she's six k, if I needed to like swing for for game or something, I could. She would be technically uh, seven if you know with a with the active dawn, and then um you know throws them off because, you know, sometimes you don't really need to use a, you don't use a blocker for attacking all the time, but, you know, with the, with the 7k, um, you know, she was also helpful during those times when I really needed to swing. And then I had Sakazuki. This one was helpful because I, uh, say I had like, you know, my low cost blockers that I usually only play like early game or I draw into it late. Um, I can trash that one from my hand or any other problem cards that I didn't really need from my hand and I can KO up to one of my opponent's characters with cost of five or less. So this one was also helpful because um, with the cost of five or less, a lot of people were playing uh, four, four cost um, attackers or four cost blockers. So this is really helpful um, to be able to get them off the field. Next I have Luffy on um, this one. You, it's, you know, trash two cards from your hand, return up to one character, cost of four or less to the owner's hand. So that way I was, um, you know, returning uh, those blockers or heavy attackers when I really needed it. And then the uh, Luffy also gains double attack. So it pretty much deals two damage. Yeah, to life. To life. Did yeah. you ever have to use that or did it ever go through? This or? one actually didn't go through. Uh, okay. um, I think I drew, I drew it, but then it was more like... You know, late game, they had a bunch of uh, blockers. I couldn't really get this uh, through, but I mean, it was good to have on the field, you know, kind of to, yeah. you know, cause a little bit of a, yeah, add a some scare. Pressure. <laughs> add some pressure to the, yeah. to the, to the yeah. game. Because you would essentially definitely want to send a blocker, but you have to have like two, <laughs> and obviously, yeah, they're most likely going to block it. But... Yeah, exactly. So it's like, obviously, you don't want to take two life, but, you know, if they can't block it, then, you know, good for you, but... Uh, Sadly, I wasn't able to get that one through for double damage, but, you know, it was still good to have on the field for the seven, but technically eight because of Zoro. Yeah, so Odin, this was a really cool card. Unfortunately, I didn't get to pull this during um, during game. So Odin, um, you know, active, you could set this character as active after um, I attack. So kind of the same thing. I can restand, restand him so he doesn't get targeted. And he's 8k, technically 9 with Zoro. So, um, yeah, I was waiting for this for this card, but uh, I didn't get to draw it at all during, <laughs> during the tournament. 
And then on KO, uh, you can play uh, up to one green land of Wano type character with a cost of three from your deck. And then, you know, shuffle the deck. So that would have been super helpful. Um, I do have a bunch of yeah, the Neko. cards. And I had Neko Mamushi. As a blocker. But, uh, yeah, as a, as a blocker. But, so that would have been a good combo. But again, I did get to see him. <laughs> Yeah, so this one, I actually really like this one, um, Judgment of Hell. It's an event card. So this one, I really like uh, Judgment of Hell. This saved me um, so many times if I was able to... I only have one of them, but I was able to pull it, luckily, on uh, multiple matches. It only costs... Uh, it's two Dawn to play. It's a counter, and then I just return one Dawn. And then this uh, lets to... I get to choose up to two character or leader give them negative 3k during the opponent's turn so luckily if they had like a bunch of big bodies out i can um bring them down uh 3k on their turn so that um they wouldn't be able to attack me for what they they plan to and so if they had like a restanding character that was a big body um i can even if they restand it wouldn't matter because it's for the whole opponent's turn so that was extremely helpful i wish i can get a full set of this i uh since i usually play purple this was enjoyable to have in hand. Two, these are event cards. KO up to one of their opponent's rested characters with a cost of four or less. So yes. this was uh, helpful if they had those four cost, um, four cost 6k attackers that are rested. I can just pop those. Or if they had, um, you know, some of their blockers that they, they blocked with and I need to get it off the field. Um, this was helpful and luckily I had two of them. Luffy, I was lucky to have two of these. At first, I was thinking, oh, well, I don't have... I mean, I had a bunch of low-cost blockers I might not need to... I don't know if I'll be able to play this or have this. Um, I don't know if I... I was like, oh, if I should play a seven-cost blocker when I had a bunch of lower blockers. But this actually um, won me the game on uh, one of my one of my matches. Um, I had him on the field, and then uh, obviously I used him to block. I protected this one. And then at one point I didn't have any attackers. I just had, I just had him blocking my life. But um, I think I was playing like a white beard, and they had to, uh, you know, take a life at the end of their turn. And then I just ended up swinging with, uh, with Zoro for uh, six. And since he had active dawn, then um, you know, technically Luffy is eight. And then I just added all my Dawn to swing for 17 at life and it won me the game. So that one was, I just used them to swing because I was already, I was like, okay, it's uh, all in or nothing. So I did have two. They popped one and then um, at the end I had one. So luckily I was able to play him instead of um, one of the lower attackers because they were able to um, beat those ones. But this one, I just kept blocking with Luffy and then at the last, uh, the last swing, I just Put it all on him and he got me to you know 17k <laughs> i had you know everyone's playing this this is like the this is like the the it card for saving everybody um so this is the death wink three cost it's a counter up to one of your leader or character cards gains 6k and then uh draw cards so that you have two cards in your hand so if, like if yeah. you <laughs> this is a super um it won me the game actually. yeah it actually won ace the game during the tournament um <laughs> And then this one, uh, this saved me too, because um, you know, plus six k, like you know, what do you get to? Yeah, if it's your last card, you if get it's two your last cards. card, yeah, you That's get two free cards. That's what when two k yeah. counters <laughs> right into L. Oh, my goodness. But if you draw it from life, it's a trigger. You can return up to one character of, with a cost of seven or less back to the owner's hand. So this, oh my gosh, I've seen. My, one of my friends, um, she saved the game and she came back. I think she had zero, zero life. life and then uh, her opponent and was at was her two. Last life. Yeah. And this was her last life and she drew sure. it and then uh, took his uh, his main attacker, went back to the hand and then like, you know, she attack, attack and then won one oh, game. So this, uh, I've seen this one all throughout the weekend, like save people's asses. So whether it came from life or if they drew into it, just to have that 6K, that really saved a lot of people. And it saved me, it saved him, it saved a lot of people. Yeah. So this is like MVP. a yeah, MVP card or, of yeah, the weekend mode, on yeah. draft mode because um, you know it's unexpected, especially if it you know, comes from trigger. It can change the whole game. And that's yeah. it. That's my my build for draft mode. Um, it was pretty fun. So yeah. Were you happy with the build? I was like... happy with the build. I mean, uh, again, there's some things I wish I switched around but you know I was getting used to all new cards 
all new gameplay and then like obviously learning as I'm reading um, while I'm playing so um, it was it was something new there were some things I had to like read a couple times because I almost misplayed on um, that stuff so again yeah I just combo until like um, uh, later and then I kind of realized it after but um, even though I didn't get a chance to draw it at the same time I probably would have to like really read it, read into it to understand like how to use it but yeah, um, being able to watch um, our other friends play or other and uh, you know other people play, you kind of see um, how the cards work and then like you know obviously seeing this come from my my friend's uh, game, I knew to like when I saw it when I was building my deck, so like okay yeah obviously this will be really helpful or you know mm. stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And overall, Zoro, you think was the best? Overall, I'm I'm happy that I had uh, a Zoro to be able to add that for me or else I would probably would have been in trouble with um, some of my lower lower um, attackers if they didn't have as much um, them and having the extra 1k Man. nice yeah had a lot of fun with that and uh, looking forward to OP2 yay tune in I'm gonna try more uh, pre-releases OP3 coming up in uh, maybe 3-4 months so yeah more more draft mode and obviously we're gonna do our deck profiles and we figure out and finalize all the decks we want to run in OP2, which I'll most likely be running a white beard. And you have any idea what you will be doing with what you like, <sighs> what you saw, or of anything? I mean, I do like, uh, I'm really attached to Kaido, so, or maybe just purple in general. So I might run um, Blurple, black and purple, because I know black counters a lot of uh, my Kaido effects and whatnot, so being able to do a mix of that I think would be really interesting and fun. Okay. Yeah. Peace. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and tune in for more One Piece content here on Cardboard Therapy. Bye.